And shalom to you, shalom. Shalom everyone who has chosen to dedicate a moment of time in their lives on purpose to the will of the Most High. To a dedicated desire to the Most High. For an own purpose, willingness to submit yourselves to acquiring knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from your Creator. I am Deacon Sampson, and I want to welcome you to King James Bible University, Burkeville, Texas, for yet another breaking of bread at Jehovah's table and believe me people today the bread will be broken we have a very meaty and very interesting thought-provoking teaching today and I pray that you will be strengthened, that you will be made conscious and aware from it, because it is an aspect or a part of life that we need to be aware of in this spiritual walk, in, in our obedience to the Most High. We need to make sure, people, that and I introduce to you your teaching for the day. You're riding a blind horse. And as I started to allude to, we need to make sure that we're not riding a blind horse. We're not riding a doctrine or either our own private interpretation of things in a manner that is abominable before the Most High. We need to make sure that our every thought and imagination is taken into captivity in obedience to the Spirit of God, the Word of the Creator, and his instruction unto us for living in this life. So we need to examine ourselves and make sure that the prompters of our desires and that the cravings of our yearnings and that the, the, the 
the drive of our hopes are not on the backs of false doctrine or self-doctrine or doctrine of the flesh, doctrine of Pharisees, doctrine of the flesh, false religions, uh, different cultural uh, uh, desires and different cultural um, adopting adoptions of their ways, customs, and truths that would infringe upon the way that the Most High tells us that we need to live in order to walk in this walk and be acceptable in His sight. If you understand what I'm sharing with you. So those are the type of things we're going to discuss in this teaching. And trust me, people, it is in our book. We just have to read it. We have to apply it. Understand it. Respect it. And endure to the end. Okay? So we're going to look at today, you're riding a blind horse. And if you're ready, people, you have your books, pens, paper. And uh, everything you need to be comfortable. We're going to get ready and get off into this teaching today, okay? Because it's talking to me as well. And... Uh, Every time I go over it, it just reinforces the, the necessity, the importance of me holding on to his instruction and not my own, okay? So let's get off into this word, people. And today's lesson, we're going to begin over here in... Uh, Proverbs. We're going to do, we started here in Proverbs and we're going to see how our own way is not the way. Okay? Our own way is not the way. We want to go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16. And we want to start right here at verse 2. I'm going to give you verse 2. And verse 3, people. Okay? And it reads, All the ways, all the ways. Let me give you this right here. Don't you see this? All the ways of a man are clean. And what? His own eyes. But the Lord way of the spirits. Commit thy way. Thy works. Excuse me. Commit thy works. Thy works unto the spirit of God. And thy thoughts shall be established. It says... The ways of what? Of a man. The ways of a man are what? Clean in his, his own eyes. You see that? Let's get that part. The ways of a man are what? Clean in his own eyes. But the spirit of God weighs the spirits. See that? So commit your your works Wait. 
Ways works. Ways works. You, man, clean in your own eyes or your ways, but commit your works unto the Lord and your your thoughts thoughts works ways unto the Lord shall be established you understand you see that people Okay, so I want you to get a good understanding of what we're dealing with and working with and working on and uh, put to rest the fallacy of just just empty religious uh, uh, term calling or word saying to make it seem like we're being pious for the most high. And in all actuality, your heart is far from it. We need to learn how to to set our passions on him. And the only way you're going to be able to set your passion on him is to obey him, crave him, let him be your every thought, let him be your every want out of life more than anything else. The same way you can sit up and want and desire your favorite food, you, want, you need to want him the same way. The same way you could want your image to look a certain way you need to want him that same way the same way you want to 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 have people think of you think of you a certain way you need to think and want the most high that same way you understand what i'm sharing with you i hope you understand what i'm sharing with you See, I'm trying to get you to see what we have to focus on. Because he, he say he going to look at the thoughts and intents of the heart. You understand? Well, I don't want him to look at the thoughts and intents of our heart and see that it's nothing but evil there. He already said it's evil continually anyway, right? So why add insult to injury and let your every, every, every thought and desire you can't even have one desire for the most high. Well, let me encourage you. You do have because you turned in to catch his teaching, to listen to his word. So we're working on it, and I want to keep you encouraged to keep continue doing it. But we need to recognize the character and the spirits of those who don't do it. You understand? That's why we're doing such teachings as this. That's why we turn in to the other teachings that we get any word that's coming out of the book of the Most High and out of his voice. You understand? Okay, so we're going to go over here to chapter 4. And we're going to pick it up right now at 4 through 7 that I have highlighted. And we're going to see some more of this your own way. It's not it. Okay? He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart, let thine heart retain my words. Remember that what we did a while ago? Huh? Remember what we did a while ago? Thine. Man. That flesh. Heart. Heart. It's going to be spiritual. It's like, okay? Thine heart. Let thine heart retain my word. Who words? His words. His words. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and live. Live what? Spiritually. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline the words of my mouth. Forget what not? The wisdom and the understanding. 
forget it not, De neither decline from my neither decline from the words of my mouth. You see that? His words, his words, his commandments, his instructions. You see that? His words is the, the wisdom and the understanding. Forget it not. Okay? Forsake her not. Forsake who not? Wisdom. And shall and she, human and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. You see this? But guess what? Your own way, your own understanding is not this wisdom and this understanding that we're talking about. You understand what I'm saying? Because, see, remember, in your own understanding, your own ways, in your own eyes, is not it. Okay? Let me show you something. Go back over here to 16. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. This is not the same understanding and wisdom that was in chapter 4. Okay? This is of man's way. This is of your own knowledge. This is of your own thought and mind. And that's not the way, okay? Scroll on down here to 16 real quick. And it reads, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? And to get understanding, rather to be chosen than silver. See these people? Again, wisdom and understanding that come from the words of the Most High or what? Rather to be chosen than silver. Yeah, that was it. 14, 17, like that was it. Just want to make sure that I got it. Got all of everything I need to put off in our next passage is going to be 20. Okay, Exodus. Book Exodus 20. I don't want, I know somebody think, oh man, they can say I'm the hair right. <laughs> yeah, that hair right. Exodus 20. 20. And 25. But believe it or not, it's actually getting a little bit better. Thank you very, very much. Exodus 20 and 25. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn wood. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast what? Polluted it. You see that, people? You ride the blind horse. You ride your own private interpretation. If you put your tool on the altar that you want to give to the Most High, he say, don't pollute that thing. See that? If thou will make me, if you will make me, dedicate to me, sacrifice unto me, an altar of stone, truth. Thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, of your own understanding, truth. You understand? Do you understand what I'm sharing with you people? For if thou lift up thy tool, if you, remember I showed you a while ago? Remember I showed you a while ago? If you, Lift up yo thy yo thy tool upon it. Thou you has polluted it. You see that people. 
instead of trying to show you he don't need your little input on what he done, why? Because everything he done is already perfect. So if you're going to give something under him, if you're going to give something under him, make sure you don't put your what? Your horse on it. Make sure you don't put your what? Your hewn stone on it. Your tool. You understand? Don't pollute it. Okay, now we're finna kick it over here to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And we wanna see what Jeremiah finna say to us over here. Jeremiah chapter 10. And 114 through 15. 14 through 15 people. I'm glad uh, little brother showed me how to use this highlighted tool so I can uh, use and hopefully make effective the understanding of what I'm be trying to share with you all and make it a little bit more plain to grasp hold of if possible you know so little brother deacon khalil thank you for your your tutoring tutoring excuse me me on this computer be able to do this okay so jeremiah 10 and we want 14 and 15 then it reads, every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is what? Falsehood. For his molten image is falsehood. And there is no breath in them. No breath in them. There is no spirit in them. They are vanity and the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. You see it, people. There ain't nothing righteous about your polluted what? Your polluted what? Tool. Ain't nothing what righteous about your polluted tool. Remember your tool upon the human stone that I mean upon the sacrifice the stone of sacrifice you want to give unto him. Huh? He said don't put your tool on it. Why? For his molten image is falsehood. Your molten image, your graving, your desire for what you see that thing supposed to be is falsehood. And there's no spirit in it. There's no life in it. You understand? You, remember, this here, you, you flesh, you carnal. Not saying that the color represents that, but you, I'm trying to show you, you, they are vanity. They, these images, these, 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 these desires, the things that come from you, they are vanity and the work of errors. He was the only one that was perfect and right. And if we're not obeying him, we won't follow suit. We're trying to become like him. Do you understand the difference? Because in the time of their visitation, they should perish. Is it going to come to pass, man? Everything is going to be proven, people. And you don't want to have your work tried and destroyed by the fire. You want your spirit to be with the Most High. You understand? 17, Jeremiah 17. And we want 
I'm not going to highlight all this one, but we want 19 through 27. Let me go get it just real quick, just, just in case. Uh, just in case. Y'all yeah, forgive me. We gonna get that just in case real quick. There might be something off in there we have to touch on. I don't know. Oops. So let's keep from getting ready and going to be ready. Huh? Then they had uh, the five versions that had they lamps trimmed with oil. Wasn't they ready? 19 to 27. Okay. Come on, let's be able to light our candle, people. Let's be ready. Let's be able to light our lamps. At any given moment, put this all in, okay? Jeremiah 17, 19 through 27 reads, Thus said the Lord, Spirit of God unto me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in, and by the which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem, and say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, the Spirit of God, not of me, not of Deacon Samson, not of any of the elders, not of any of the other deacons, but hear the word of the Lord, the word of the Spirit of God that come from the Most High, that leap down from heaven, that come down to give us guidance. You understand? Ye kings of Judah, and all Judah, and all the and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, every last one of y'all. You hear me? Do you hear me, people? Let me make that peep. All the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus said the Spirit of God, take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day. Bur no burden on the Sabbath day. On his set apart day. You understand? Nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Neither do ye any work, but hallow ye the Sabbath day, as I commanded your fathers. But they obey not. They what? Obey not. You see that? They obey not. Neither incline their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. You seeing it in your book, people. And guess what? It's sad to say that a lot of people that I've witnessed especially of our people, sadly. They're not obeying. They're not inclining their ear, inclining their ear to the word of God. Because it's almost as though you can, it, it, I want to say that you can almost feel that they feel, or oh, let me put it like this, I want to believe that, that they can feel or sense that presence of light or the presence of the Most High, His Spirit on you, because you change the atmosphere where you go. You understand? So I'm not saying that this is dead, dead on, but from my analysis, 
you know, from my own evaluation and for the same response of different people, different places I go, man, it's got to be spiritual. Because where it say we bow not against flesh and blood, but against spirit, uh, principalities and powers in the... Uh, oh, let me go to it. Hold up. Let me go to it. Hold on. I want to show you this. And we'll come right back over here, y'all. Because we right here. 23. Now, let me go on finish reading this out. That, let me finish reading that out. And then we'll go to that. Okay? So, let me make a note of that. We'll battle. And then, we'll I'm going to show you that. We'll get through with this here real quick. I'm going to stay focused. Okay. And it shall come to pass if ye diligently hearken unto me, unto him, not unto ourselves, you understand? Not of our own flesh, but diligently hearken unto him, his word, said the Spirit of God, to bring in a no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but hollow the Sabbath day. Not to do no work therein, then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings and princes, sitting upon the throne of the beloved, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, on the excuse me, and this city shall remain forever. But we did we do that? But they obeyed not. And they shall come from the cities of Judah, from the places about Jerusalem, and from the land of Benjamin, and from the plain, and from the mountains, and from the south, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices and meat offerings and incense, bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord, but if you were not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates of Jer in the gates thereof, excuse me, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. The result of disobedience. You know what I'm saying? The response to our disobedience will be met with force and fury. It will be met with 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 a, a power that we won't be able to stand. Cause he say that that he'll kindle a fire and it shall not be quenched. You see these people? Jeremiah. Jeremiah 7, and we're going to pick it up at 1 through 7, okay? Jeremiah 7, pick it up 1 through 7. Uh, if I had to do a whole chapter, boy, we'd be, we're going to be in trouble. But well, I want to get a good understanding. So I feel that this is my, you know, my help gain a little bit more clarity to some who may be struggling to see the difference. You know. Okay, so let's read Jeremiah seven one through seven, and it reads: The word that came to Jeremiah from the Spirit of God, saying, "Stand in the gate of." the Spirit of God's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Spirit of God, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Spirit of God. Thus said the Lord of hosts and the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings. What did he say? Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. 
Look at that. That right there. So y'all won't see. See that? Amend your ways and your doing, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between man and his neighbor, oh, excuse me, a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt. You see that? You see that? Neither walk after other gods to your hurt. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. You see this, people. These are the areas and components where we're falling short. In. These are the areas that we're having the 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 breakdown in. You know what I'm saying? Because see, you got a lot of people thinking that that oh, just because I don't feel I'm wrong, I'm not wrong. But he's saying, amend your ways. Don't put no trust in the, 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 the vanity of empty words or the lying words or those falsehood type terms. You know what I'm saying? The temple of the Lord is, is oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. The temple of the Lord is, oh, God know my heart. God know my heart. He with, he see me. He know me. God understand me. So in other words, God God is is is, is going to make an allowance for my defilement. You understand what I'm sharing with you? As long as I'm with God, everything gonna be all right. Uh. Or in the name of Jesus, I'm I'm saved and sanctified. Under the blood, I'm I'm blessed. I'm saved and sanctified. These are lying words, and you're trusting the vanities, people. You understand what I'm sharing with you? Okay, let me pick it up a little bit because we got quite a few more to go with. I don't want to have us in here too long. Okay? So let's go over here to Psalms. Psalms. Look at Psalm. Right here. Psalm 1, 1 through 6. Let me pick it up, son. I need to ask the little brother if there is a nope. I gotta do each one. Yeah, each one without the number. Each one without the number. Okay. One through seven reads. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Remember I told you that a while ago? In who law? The most high law. The most high law. 
You see that? And the law of the Lord, his delight. His delight. Who delight? You. Your delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, the law of the Lord, does he meditate? Does he, who? This is you. Meditate day and night. And he shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. He shall be like a tree, excuse me, planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, and the ungodly are not so. You see that? The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff. Because see, these, the ungodly, those who are rejecting the meditating on the law of God day and night, not sitting in the seat of the school, the ungodly are not so. See that? But I like what? The chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Spirit of God knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And this is not the first time we've covered that. So, what we're covering here is this. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his seed. His leaf, his leaf, also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff that driveth away, that the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment of the, shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Spirit of God knoweth the way, the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. That ungodliness, that perishing, is repeating itself again. Okay? Now, run over here real quick to Proverbs. Proverbs. Six and twenty-three. Cause see, we need that 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 word of God to be a light to us, right? Only His word is a light to us. And it says here, for the commandment is a light, a lamp, excuse me, and the law is light. You see that? And reproofs of, and reproofs, corrections of instruction are the way of life. Because how you going to know if you're doing something wrong, if you're, I mean, doing something right or wrong if you're not shown, you know, you put forth your hand or effort to, to, make a, uh, uh, an advancement of action and you're shown that, hey, your thought on that thing, the way it should turn out, that's not right. Correction, reproof of instruction. You see that? All the way of life. So you can be critiqued and so you can be refined and made whole in your understanding. That's why we got to take our own private interpretation about the thing 
so we can get the understanding of how to perform the thing. You see, you see the difference? Let's show you this lamp and this word of light. Let me give you another example of this right here in uh, Psalms. Psalms 119, 119, and we're going to scroll down and pick it up at 105, 105, and it reads, Thy word is a lamp unto my desires, and a light unto my path. You see that? The word is going to light your way. <clears throat> so that you can see, so that you can perceive, understand. But if you don't have the word of God, then you're riding a blind horse, people. Isaiah, Isaiah 43 and 5. Because this is how we the people feel. And this is how we acted when we tried to uh, interject our own thought pattern of life. Our own desire for our living. We want to take the resources that God gave to us and utilize them our own way. And that's not right, people. It's not so. You know what I'm saying? That's very disrespectful. And 4 and 1 reads... And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread. You see that? We will what? We will learn our own way and wear our own apparel, our own covering. You see that? Only let us. You see that? Only let us that eat the ones that want to do this. Let us be called by thy name. You see that? Let us be called by thy name to take away our our reproach. You see that? You see the difference there? They want their own thing. And the 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 the, the pollution of it, they want you to cure that. Got that? Now let's go on, on to Ephesians. Ephesians for 17 through 19. Ephesians 4, 17 through 19 reads. So this I say in Ephesians 4, 17. This I say therefore in testifying the creator that ye, you, henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Where? Their mind. In the vanity, that worthlessness of their mind. Vanity. You understand? You, hear, you understand that? Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You see that, people? The blindness of their heart. You see that? who being past feeling have given themselves over to 
unto lasciviousness. See that? Lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. We don't need to have the sinless people. We need to be privy of this, aware of this, conscious of this, so that we can fight it off, okay? Now let's go over here to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians 11, excuse me, 3, and we want to pick it up at 11, Eleven through 15, people. And it reads, For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. If we threw, what we thrown away was glorious. If you thought that had any value to it, what remaineth is even more glorious. Okay? Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. See that? Great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face. But that he that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For unto this day, when? Unto this day. Unto this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the, the reading in the reading of the Old Testament. You see that? Which veil is done away in Christ? But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Blindness, you're riding the blind horse, you hide, you're doing your own doctrine, you got your own understanding, and if you're implementing your way over what the Most High say, you're putting a veil over the law. You understand? You're putting a veil over the light of the lamp or the light of the word. Excuse me. You understand what I'm saying? You're putting a veil over it, you know, letting it be a, like a cloth of obscurity for you to see your way righteous, to obey the Most High. Okay? Luke. Luke. 23. Luke 23. And we're going to pick it up at 44 and 47. 44 through 47, excuse me. 44 through 47. Forty-four through forty-seven. Okay, and it reads, and it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent. The veil. This is to give a little bit more uh, clarity on this veil that we was talking about, this curtain. You know what I'm saying? The veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Yahweh had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, 
into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Now, when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. A righteous man. Well, in the midst of darkness, the veil of the temple was rent. That veil is a cloth. You know, I just want to show you that curtain there, okay? Almost like a drapery. We're going to look at another example here in Romans. Romans 1. And I want to read 18 through 32. Okay? And we want to see how they still put, utilize, and how you say that to this day, the, the 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 veil remains over the reading of the law. Well, let's look at how it's laying over it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, and God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power, God is so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. but it became vain Professing themselves. Professing who? Themselves to be wise. They became fools. Why? Because their foolish hearts were darkened. They became vain. They became vain. See that? And their imagination, let's get that too. And their where? And their imagination. And their foolish heart was dark. See that? And professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed. Look here. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. You see that? Now look here. Wherefore, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their what? Their own hearts. Yeah. The lust of what? Their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You see that? Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the what? 
the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, we got a little bit more. Hold on. I was supposed to give you from 21 through 32. Oh no, 18 through 32, here we go. Yeah, 18 through 32, okay, here it is. Nine, oops. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Riding their own horse, their own blind horse. You know what I'm saying? Their own understanding, their own way. And likewise, also did the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. How you retain God in his knowledge? You remember his word. You meditate on his laws, his instruction, his commandments. So that you can have his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Gave themselves over to a reprobate mind. To what? To a reprobate mind. To do those things which were not convenient. To do that, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness. Look at being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. Whispers. Backbiters. Haters of God. What's that? Haters of God. Despiteful. Proud. Boasters. Inventors of evil things. Disobedient to parents. Without understanding. Covenant breaker. Without natural affection. Implacable. Unmerciful. Who, knowing the judgment of God, the doctrine and teaching of God, that they which commit such things are where they death, not only do the same, but what do they do? They have pleasure in them that do them. See that? Uh, look at how people rely on their own selves, trusting that strength of Egypt or the strength of Pharaoh, returning and looking to Egypt for their provisions. Let's go over here to Isaiah. Isaiah 30. We want Isaiah 30. And we want to pick it up one through five. I tell you, boy, in doing the service of the Most High, the, the enemy show try to come along and distract you and disturb you and to take you out of focus of what you're supposed to be doing in many ways, this many ways, shape, form, and fashion. You understand? But we got to stay focused, people. And we got to fight through the temptation. Okay? Isaiah 31 through 5 read, Whoa. To the rebellious children, said the Spirit of God, that take counsel, but not of me. You see that? Woe to the rebellious children. To the rebellious children, 
said the Spirit of God, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. You see that? That they may add sin to sin, even thought or wicked thought to wicked thought, that they that they what they walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. See that? This is what these people are right here. Egypt and the strength of Pharaoh. See that? And to trust in the covering of what? Egypt. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust of in the shadow of Egypt be your confusion. You understand? Oops. The trust in the shadow of Egypt be your confusion. You see that? And the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Okay? For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. And they were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help, nor profit, but a shame, and also what? A reproach. They were ashamed of the people that couldn't profit them. It's just a reproach. It ain't worth nothing. You know what I'm saying? Worth nothing. Because we are. We put our trust and our strength in the wrong things. We're riding a blind horse. Isaiah. Isaiah 36. 4 through 9. 4 through 9. And it reads. And a rap shika. And Rab Shika said unto them, Say ye now to Hezekiah, Thus said the king, the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is in is this wherein thou trusted? I said, Said thou, but they are but vain words. Didn't we cover that a while ago? Huh? They are what? Vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now, on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Lo, thou trust in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. Where on, where on, if a man lean, it will go where into his power, and pierce it. So is a Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all those that trust in him. You see this, people. You see this. You see what he just said. We'll make that that color. Because see, look, he said, right here, Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, whereon if a man leaneth, if 
you lean on a broken reed, he said, it will go into his hand and pierce it. It will go into his power and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, like the broken reed of Egypt, to all those that trust in him. He going to what? Pierce. He going to pierce, going to go into your power. He going to basically hurt you, cause you suffering. You understand? But if thou say to me, we trust in the Lord, the Spirit of God, our God, it, it, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away and said to Judah and to Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar? They took away our trust. They took away our true power. You understand? So that we could have the the, 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 the the piercing trust in man, in flesh. And we can't do this, people, in something that is not uh, 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 substantiated or worthwhile. You understand? We can't trust in this king of sin. And we sure can't trust in what? In the bondage in which we was taking captivity. You understand what I'm sharing with your people? Huh? Hey. Now, therefore, give pleasure, I pray thee, to my master, king of Assyria, and I will give thee 2,000 horses. If thou be able on thy part, to set riders upon them. I'm going to give you the horses. I'm going to give you the doctrine. But you got to set riders on them. You got to put the people on them that's going to carry the message and act it out. It's going to be the heralds to speak it for. How then would thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servant and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots? And for horsemen. You see that? How wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servant and put your trust on Egypt for chairs and for horsemen? We're switching the paradigm. We're switching the focus. You know what I'm saying? We're switching the understanding to something that from something that is is of the most high and eternal to something that is worthless and inferior. And we can't be doing this, people. It's, it's, it's going to be a detriment to do this. And even at finna be 51 years old here in a little while, I'm still learning where... How I may be in error, or how I may have made a mistake, or, or somewhere where I should have been stout and strong, I dropped the ball. You understand? We can't lean into our own understanding. And then when correction or that reproof do come, you got to be willing to do what? Be corrected, accepted, implemented, meant it, you know? Say, I was wrong. I dropped the ball. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they what? Because they are many and in horsemen and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. 
Now the Egyptians are men and not God. You see that? Now the Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses flesh and not spirit. See that? Their horses flesh and not spirit. When the Lord, the Spirit of God, shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. See that, people? I hope this just shows you why it's so imperative not to trust in that which is inferior. But a lot of us choose to add to, you know, to to add in, uh, insult to injury and want to worship that which is created over the Creator. Thirteen. What? I see. I wasn't expecting it to go like that. I should have looked for it over here. Y'all forgive me. Okay, so to pull this part, let me find it like this. Let me find it like this. Okay, we want the addition to Esther 13. And we want to pick it up at 11, 11 through 14, through 14, 11 through 14. And it reads, Thou art, Lord, creator of all things, and there is no man that can resist thee, which art perfection and beauty, the creator. Thou knowest all things, and thou knowest, Lord, that it was neither in contempt nor pride, nor for any desire of glory that I did not bow to proud amen. For I could have been I could have been content with good will with goodwill for the salvation of Israel to kiss the soles of his feet. But I did this that I might not prefer the glory of man above the glory of God. Neither will I worship any but thee, O God. Neither will I do it in pride. See that? Right here. I want y'all to see the part right here. I might not prefer the glory of man above. The glory of God. I did this, that I might not prefer the glory of man above the glory of God. And neither will I worship any but thee, O God. Neither will I do it what? In pride. I'm going to humble myself down and obey you. I ain't going to have no pride for heart. No ulterior motives or reason for obeying your word. So now I want to. Go and let's find, uh, let's find out why people want to 
provoked the most out to anger in the midst of them doing what they doing and how they doing, especially they know to do right. Especially if they know to do right. Thing chain color on me, boy. Taught me to use the thing, how to put it in my system, but he ain't tell me we're gonna flip color on me. 17, 1 through 6. That's what we want. And we wanna read. It reads The sand of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond, it is graven upon the table of their heart. And upon the horns of your altars, written deep, heavy, etched, etched sharply in them. You know what I'm saying? Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves about the green trees upon the high hills. Oh, my mountain in the field. O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage. And thou, you, even yourself, shalt discontinue from your heritage that I gave thee and will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For you have kindled fire in my anger, which shall what? Burn forever. Thus said the Spirit of God, Cursed be the man that trusts the man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Spirit of God, that word of God, that instruction. For he shall be what? like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall what? Inhabit the parched places. The parched places. The parched places in the wilderness, in the salt land, and not inhabited. See that, people? Jeremiah 17, let's go to 9, 9, and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Spirit of God, search the heart. I tried the rain, even to give every man according to his way and according to the fruit of his doing. Jeremiah 7. And we want to pick it up down here. 8 through 10. Jeremiah 7. Behold, you trust in lying words. Go to lying words again. See that? Be trusting lying words that cannot profit. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Huh? We're not delivered to do that. We're not set free or saved, uh, reserved in order to defame and disrespect the Most High's name, His way. You understand what I'm sharing with you? That's not why we're here. 
And if that was the case, then you, you getting all you going to get right now. And then you're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Huh? So you telling me this is all your life is worth? So we have to tame ourselves, people. We can't be trusted in lying words. Like we can have it out, we can do whatever we want. No, we can't. We can't be stealing, murdering, you know what I'm saying? And committing adultery, swearing falsely, you burn incense unto other gods. You know what I'm saying? Walking or living in retrospect to other gods and what they say, especially of the flesh. You understand? We can't be doing this, people. Psalms. The book of Psalms. And we want chapter 118. And we want to pick it up. 118. 8. And 9. And it reads, it is better to trust in the Spirit of God than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Spirit of God than to put confidence in princes. Ezekiel 23. 25 through 29. And it reads, And I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal, and they shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take away thy nose and thine ears and thy raiment, shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. 26. They shall also strip thee of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. He's saying this is how they're going to treat us as a people. You know what I mean? Thus will I make thy lewdness to cease from thee and thy whoredom brought from the land of Egypt so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes unto them nor remember Egypt anymore. Say, man, you're going to be so disgusted with them, you ain't going to even want to have them on your mind because they're going to what? Do you treacherous? For thus said the creator God, behold, I will deliver thee into the hands of them whom thou hated, into the hands of them from whom thy mind is alienated. And they shall deal with thee hateful, hatefully, and shall take away all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare. You see that? And the nakedness of thy heart shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy heart. You're going to be exposed. Because, see, once they had their way with you, they're going to expose you for doing so. Isaiah, Isaiah 2. And we'll scroll out here and pick it up. 17, 17, and 18. And it reads, And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low, and the Spirit of God alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he shall what? Utterly abolish. It seems synonymous to their peers, right? Right? Let 
Jeremiah. Doing a lot of Jeremiah reading. Jeremiah 46. And we're going to scroll down here and pick it up at 25 and 26. And the Spirit of God of hosts, God of Israel, said, Behold, I will punish the multitude of Noah and Pharaoh, each with their gods and their kings, even Pharaoh, all them that trust in him, to their people, and I will deliver them into the hand of those that seek their lives and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of his servant. And afterwards it shall be inhibited, as in the days of old, said the Lord. Scroll to Peter, Deuteronomy 6, 20 through 23. Deuteronomy 6. Let's catch it at 20. And it reads, And when thy son asked thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies, and the statutes, and the judgments, which the Spirit of God our God hath commanded you? What, the, what they mean? Why are you doing this? What, what are they for? What are they in reference to, Father? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt. We were the king of sin, slave in the land of bondage. And the Spirit of God brought us out of the land of bondage with a mighty power. And the Spirit of God showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household, before I understand it. And brought us out from thence, from there, that we what? that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore swear unto our fathers. You see that, people? This is what we're to share with those that come after us so they have a good understanding of the uh, treasure in which they're hold it so dear to them or uh, the preciousness of what's been revealed and given unto them so that they can hold it in uh, respect. You understand what I'm sharing with you? And we want to pick it up at the book of Zechariah 7 chapter 7 and I want verse 13. And it reads, Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and I would not hear, said the Lord of hosts. We don't want him to take that uh, same tactic of response to us to hear our cry for him for guidance and for help for succor. Like when he was trying to give his voice to us, we didn't hear his instruction and obey him. So we got to obey him, people. You understand? We have to trust in him and trust in him only. 
Psalms. Psalms 44. And we're going to pick it up here. Four through four through eight. got here Psalms and we have 44 we're going to do 4 through 8 4 through 8 okay and it reads thou art my king O God command deliverances for Jacob through thee through you, through thee, will we push down our enemies. Through thine, through thy way, through thy name, will we tread upon, tread them under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow. Excuse me, I will not trust in my boat. Neither shall my sword save me. But thou, you, has saved us from our enemies. And has put them to shame that what that hated us. In God we boast all the day long and praise thy way, thy name forever. Selah. See that? Proverbs. Proverbs three. I'm gonna pick it up to five. Excuse me. We have five and six. Proverbs three, five and six. Reads, trust in the spirit of God with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. See that? Jeremiah 17 and we're going to pick it up down here 7 7 and 8 7 and 8 read blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord the spirit of God and whose hope the spirit of God is for he shall be as a tree planted by water, planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Ephesians. See, these are some of the some of the things that come about with trusting the Most High, trusting Him only. Ephesians, four, four, and we're gonna scroll down here and pick it up at twenty through twenty-three. Twenty through twenty-three. Twenty through twenty-three, and it reads, "But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard that have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning 
the former conversation, the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See that? Baruch. You have to do what? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Baruch. Right at the germ. Baruch. Uh, two. Thirty through thirty three. Thirty through thirty three read. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivity, they shall what? Remember themselves and shall know that I am the creator, their God, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name, my way, and return from their stiff neck. And what? Return from their stiff neck, their own way, not wanting to yield to my yoke. You know what I'm saying? They will return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. And they shall remember the way of their fathers, which is sin before the Lord. They won't repeat them same processes. You understand? They're going to remember, hey, this is what they were punished for. And what they would put away for, let us not repeat these same things because we don't want the same what? Outcomes. Right? Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. We're going to scroll down here and pick it up at... 10 through 13 first. 10 through 13 reads, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings. Receive my what? My sayings, my words, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straight straightened. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. See that? 18. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Ezekiel 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 34 And we're going to scroll down and pick it up at 11 through 15 And it reads, For thus said the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will be shoot, will both search my sheep out and seek them out. 
and a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountain of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhibited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon high mount and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie down in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and will cause them to lie down, said the Lord God. You see that people? Nineteen through twenty four. And as for my flock, as for my flock, they eat that which have which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Therefore, thus said the, the Creator God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle, 21, uh, 21, because ye have thrust with the side and with the shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore, 22, therefore, Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and what? And cattle. I will judge between what? Cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Spirit of God, will be what? Their guide. And my servant, David, a prince among them. I, the Spirit of God, have what? Spoken it. And our final passage in this teaching will be out of John. And we want John chapter 6. And we want to scroll down here and pick it up at. We want 63 through 69 people. 63 through 69. 63. Oops. 63 through 69. And it reads... It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But they, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? 
Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the servant of the living God. And that's the one I'm holding on to, and that's the one I encourage you to hold on to, people. This word, and I lean unto your own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So people, if you would, remember to pay attention to the, the doctrine and the fact that you don't want to put your own interpretation on the thing because being blind is foolish. Walking in the lust of your own fleshly desire is not right. And we want his law to be our light and our understanding. You understand? Keep that in mind, people. So until we come together again, remember, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see that? Between now and then, I bid you all a hearty, hearty shalom. <laughs>